Hey, my friends, welcome to Making Clouds with Mudflap. Another late night edition. We've got some running around to do tomorrow, too, so I'm going to have a little vape session with you tonight. Somebody was saying to me the other day about not vaping, I think it was Dia. So, you know what? I wanted to have a little session and maybe talk about an old story or something like that. And what better way to do that than either a doobie or a vape? And I hadn't really tried any of Joey Boo's Tangerine Dream in my soul yet. And I've been dying to because it just fucking smells phenomenal. Can't honestly say I've ever had that strain before. And they're going to have to be uh, on their game to equal something like this because it is freaking on par. Load this baby up. I'm gonna just ground up a fresh nugget. I do like to grind them up fresh. I don't like to break too much up at a time, unless it's my regular Reggie Bubba Kush, and we always break up a grinder full. So that usually lasts us a couple days. I don't really smoke a whole lot, and somebody was asking in the question or in the comments there. I think it was Ford. Windstar 351 about uh, my script. My daily scripts for 2.5 grams, which I'm allowed to carry a month's supply with me at all times. So I'd be allowed to carry 75 grams with me. That's how it works. I think right now with the new rules, it's up to 150 grams you can have uh, for, uh, for a month's supply, I believe, with you. So that's kind of the general idea I've gotten from that what people got obviously got three grams you get 90 and up to 150 even though you can have a script for more than 150 which is more of the severe cases but I yeah I'm not sure the rules upon that because I fall into the lesser class because I don't have one of the truly I guess life-threatening diseases or what, what they prescribe a lot of those higher dosage ones even though I do eat the majority of my stuff maybe a little bit more than I'm prescribed but that's because I eat more of it and now they're just starting to look at it more that way but anyways that's not what I was going to talk about today I gotta turn this damn thing on if it's, we're going to get any enjoyment out of it come on battery oh it looks like we got one session left hopefully a full one if not We'll charge her up and use her again. That's the best thing about this thing. This little solo here. She lasts seven sessions or seven lights on it, which is also the temperature gauge. And it's kind of weird that when the battery's charged, the lights fall and it seems like every session I use it, it goes down. I don't know if it's meant to be that way. It's just the way it works. I myself, uh, when I have a session, I started off at five and about part way through, I'll turn it up to six to get the uh, next level of heat. Um, effects out of the cannabis and not to mention it does need to go a little bit higher to cook it it doesn't or not cook it to vaporize it it does not um, combust at all in this vaporizer and the flavor out of it is just freaking phenomenal for a little thing like that and i think they're like 160 bucks canadian or something like that they're they're nice little freaking vaporizers and they're built in canada here too and uh i, I think it was Tim maybe was saying that they're proud of when they hear something. No, I guess it was kind of a nerd was saying that when he hears uh, something's made in the USA, he's proud of it. Well, yeah, I'm the same way here in Canada. Uh, when I see something's uh, made in Canada, I'm pretty proud of it, especially when it's something to do with uh, cannabis. That is even better. But even when I'm in the Walmarts and stuff like that and I'm looking at things, I'll look to see where some of the stuff is from or made. And if it costs a couple bucks more to buy it from Canada, fucking right, I'll do it. You know, uh, we got to keep our people working, too. No offense to other people, we bring enough of that shit in. But, hey, whenever you can support your own country, we got to be buying more Canadian and stuff like that and supporting the little shops and and spending your money in the local stores instead of the big box stores, you know, like the local bakery. You know, if you can pop in there even once or twice a week and grab some buns and maybe a sweet treat if you're into that. Or, um, yeah, i got to get my medicated cream down here. It's something I'm going to grab and show you too because it's something I use that I can only get in the Compassion Club in Toronto and I'm sure other places have it now, but come on you focus beast. There we go. 
pain relief salve. I've had this in a video before, but this little jar is about 30 bucks. It usually lasts a month or two, depends on my aches and pains. Oh, we have reached our heat absorption there. And it's kind of got a, like a Vicks menthol rub to it, too. It is a cannabis cream. But boy, when I rub that into my knee with for my arthritis or my shoulder right now when it's in pain, it just seems to relieve it a little bit more. Oh, wow, that is really flavorful. Mm. I just want to suck on this thing all the time here. Mm, just so good. Especially at the beginning when it's got more, more of the uh, terpenoids coming through. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's starting to feel a little bit better, too. A little bit more relief. My hands always got a little extra cream on it. I can rub that on the knees, too. This glass of water before bed. Damn, it's 5 to 12 again. Another midnight special. Anyways, what I was going to talk about tonight was uh, LSD and me. Somebody had offered me a hit the other day, and I thought, Geez, you know, we're going camping this year. Maybe I will take that and maybe, you know, split it with Buddy or something when we're camping. And I thought, nah, nah. I, the last time I did that was when I was a teenager. And I usually do mushrooms and that after, or when I stop doing acid. And I thought, yeah, maybe mushrooms would be cool for camping too. But then I thought, well, we're going to be way up north, like way up north near Algonquin Park. And I'm going to have my two dogs with me, so I don't know if I want to be responsible for my two, and not to mention the wife, but still, I'm going to have two little creatures with me uh, with a lot of wildlife around us, and I don't need to be dealing with anything like that. So I rethought that, and we'll just stick to our cannabis on that issue. But anyways, I thought I'd talk a little bit about my LSD usage as a younger person. I'm not saying I was overboard with it, but I did like my psychedelics as a music lover. And that's when I was first introduced to LSD was when I was 16, 15? No, I guess I was 14 and we were going to, no, I was 15. We were going to a big, my first big concert. I took the bus trip from London. Music Man Tours is when I first wanted to Thought it'd be cool to be a bus tour guide, which I ended up doing later in life. But I thought we'll talk about that another time. We're talking about the LSD now. So went to this all-day concert. Start at noon. Ted Nugent and Aerosmith were the last two bands playing. Uh, like I said, I was 15, so I wasn't supposed to be drinking. And I had a Mickey with me. And I drank that on the bus on the way up. So by noon, I was already plastered. And we bought, brought doobies and whatnot, and somebody brought out the acid about 6 o'clock, and they offered me like a half a hit. Well, I didn't want to turn them down, but I'd also heard so much about it, and at that young age, I thought, no, no, I better not, I better not. And But I didn't want to say no after they'd all, or after Buddy said he'd share this with me, so he put it in my hand, and I pretend the wind blew it away and didn't eat it. I fucking wimped out. But at that time, to me, that's just not something I was ready for. And I've always been that way in my life and not really gone for things or done things because somebody's pushed me to or asked me to. I've kind of f feel that I should, but then I think generally I've get the better sense over me, regardless. That was at the beginning of the summer that year. Well, by September and going through the summer and seeing that it didn't drive you crazy and that, Okay, as long as things were done in moderation, maybe it wouldn't be so bad to do. So every year in London, around September, they have the Western Fair, which is like the carny rides and the games, and we have the racetrack around there, and bands usually play, and, you know, it's just the, the annual thing. It's been going on for 140 years or something like that. Anyone from the area, Chili Boo and that will know what I'm talking about. So we decided that was what we were going to do that night. Uh, we took it, we walked around for like two and a half hours and didn't feel a thing. I think it was purple microdot, yeah. And so we left the grounds and decided to go to the train tracks and smoke a joint, which are just up by Kellogg's. People know that too. Not very far, really, just in like a block away. So we walked up there, we were sitting on the tracks, we smoked a joint, and boom, that fucking shit kicked in. And 
it, these were tracks that go into the cereal factory, but uh, obviously aren't used at 10 o'clock at night. And we thought the trains were coming. So we went back into the fair and did the laser light show, Pink Floyd laser light show, you know, when you sit in the dome and they put it on the ceiling and ooh ah, and a couple rides and giggling and laughing and thought, you know, like this is all right. So that was a pretty good first experience. Um, didn't really ever get too out of hand with my usage of it. It was a concert and camping thing at first until I found mushrooms and realized I could do a natural way. And I don't believe I ever did it too, very often after that, maybe once or twice, but I can't honestly remember doing it after I found mushrooms. Not that I did mushrooms a lot of here because you get the, so I'm getting that shutter just thinking about it. <laughs> and I still don't mind doing those every once in a while, but in very small doses, not like before where I did a whole gram and then maybe more later, but I think that's just something that eventually you'll learn in life too. The big, uh, the big one that was really good at the time was the uh, blotter, the star blotter. It was like a white star on a blue background. It was like cardboardy stuff with the, with the drop on it. And you could see the drop was dropped on the star. And oh, That shit was good back in the day. And then once, the most I ever did, I think, was five hits one night accidentally. Purely accidentally, um, <laughs> at a, a Richie Blackmore's Rainbow and Scorpions concert. But I didn't know it was five at the time because when the guy gave me the container, he just gave it to me. It was powder, so I just stuck my finger in it. And he's like, oh, dude, that was five hits afterwards, obviously. He didn't tell me that before, but there was only like 2,000 people at this concert at the London Ice House. And <laughs> London Ice House. And I'm a fairly big guy. And now that I think about it, I probably, because I always remember Scorpions on and walking right to the front stage and standing there, woo, and then walking back, and then another good song, and I'm walking right to the front. I know that there was a lot of people there, but maybe just being the way I was, I just powered my way to the front now that I think about it, because, yeah, that was a, not that I got out of hand or did anything stupid, I just really enjoyed the show and got a, good, got a whole new appreciation for Richie Blackmore that night. Regardless, I think that was one of the last times I ever did it. Don't know why. Oh, yeah, I do know why I brought that up today. Because I got offered that this week. So I thought I would tell that story anyways. It's just just really different for me. I don't I don't even know if I've told my son about those stories. Well, he watches the movies every once in a while. We'll have to title it something so he can learn a little bit more about his pops. <laughs> hey, it's something I lived through. And I'm sure if uh, any other 70s children, I don't know how, I know it started in the 60s, but I know it was really prevalent in the 70s, probably remember doing that stuff too. I guess it would be more in the 80s when I really, yeah, it started in the 70s. Makes it seem so long ago when you say that. But... We have experience, and we're still here to tell about it. And you know why that is? Because we didn't go overboard with the chemicals, went to the natural ways, and stuck to cannabis. And now that we know we can eat cannabis for medicine, instead of just using it to recreationally, I think uh, we're getting back to the old ways of treating ourselves. I think the natives had a lot of the ways with the natural herbs and trees and ways of life that we need to start thinking that way but we live in such a chemical world these days it is what it is we do what we have to to get through it anyways i was walking the dogs before uh, my little adventure out of town today and about uh, half a kilometer up the road so maybe seven eight minute walk is uh, the Walmart and every Wednesday they have a car rally there with all the old cars and all the car heads get together car heads I don't know if they call them, what they call them cruise nights I guess is what it's called and pretty nice looking cars and all that kind of stuff there too don't get me wrong it's it looks really nice but I'm not really into that I'm not a car guy even though I've worked on a few of them here and there but and I appreciate them but my thing with 
vehicles is more they're more for means of purpose not a status symbol or you know uh, if it's a hobby and that fine that's that's it but I'm myself thinking okay I see all these people there's a whole bunch of them they've got the, the tunes blare and the freaking pizza fucking stand there and they're all enjoying themselves and great and it's really nice that like-minded people can get together with their hobbies and enjoy themselves together in a group without harming anybody and allow you to come into their circle and see what they're doing and not bother them and it would be really fucking nice if things started to turn that way for us and people could maybe see that cannabis isn't this big evil freaking thing that maybe some of us want to get out and do things as a group and and then when they need they have the cannabis they can get out and do these certain things and and get together so like I said, I'm all happy for them and that, but maybe someday we'll see the day. I know the vapor lounges are there and they're coming a little bit, but even some of the vapor lounges, to get to them, there's stairs, and I mean, if they're meant to be for the people who want to use it medically, a lot of them maybe can't use that kind of stuff, but like I said, times are changing, and so are we. I'll put the little walk on after the video here, and uh, you can join uh, me and the dogs for a little sign cruise today, or... You can come back and join us tomorrow. Anyways, thanks for joining me. I'm going to do that regular YouTube spiel thing that everyone does. You know, hit like and subscribe. And, you know, share. And pretend you uh, enjoy the stuff. No, I really do appreciate you guys who watch me regularly and hang out with me. It's fucking awesome. And I love the interactions. And yeah, just keep sending questions. I'm going to keep trying to answer the ones I can in the comments. And I'm going to bring them up every once in a while here. I'm trying to remember them a little bit better. I didn't write them down. I'm thinking I'm got the wheels a turning sometimes. Anyways, it's a really nice day. It's supposed to be half decent day tomorrow, possible rain. I'm thinking the way my knees and shoulders are feeling right now. Tight and swollen. I think we're going to get some rain tomorrow. We'll see if I'm right or not. Anyways, it's time for this old cat to hit the hay. We'll see you tomorrow. Good doggy. When spring is getting close, the car rally is starting to happen around here. I'm going to go to Walmart parking lot. One of these days, I'm going to get over there with my camera, as soon as I know it's started then. I'm going to take some shots, and we'll have a few more out. I think this is the first one of the season, so that's kind of cool. We'll talk to you later, but definitely some nice vehicles over there, if you're into that kind of thing. <clears throat> Cheers. just the three houses across the street from that, so that's pretty cool.